Akiro, Mean to Live, was directed and co-written by Akira Kurosawa, with his other two co-writers being frequent Kurosawa collaborators Shinobi Hashimoto and Hidiro Guni, and I do apologize for probably butchering some or all of the names in this review. It follows Kanji Watanabe, an aging city council bureaucrat who discovers he's dying from stomach cancer. Since his wife died 30 years ago, Watanabe, played by Takashi Shimura, has drifted through a mundane, aimless life as one of the many unproductive city council administrators. これがこの物語の主人公であるしかし今この男について語るのは退屈なだけだなぜなら彼は時間を潰しているだけだから彼には生きた時間がないつまり彼は生きているとは言えないからで after his cancer diagnosis, he sets out to find meaning in his life and find a way to truly live before the end. Wanabe keeps his illness from almost everyone, including his son, played by Nobuo Kaneko, and daughter-in-law, played by Kyoko Seki. Wanabe's relationship with his son has slowly deteriorated in the decades since his wife's passing. He feels distant from him, despite all three living together. This is not helped by Watanabe hearing his son and daughter rather coldly discussing using some or all of his retirement money to buy their own place. <laughs> The two don't suspect Watanabe is ill. They instead think he's seen a much younger woman who is in a place in society that would bring their family dishonor. This woman is actually a young city council co-worker, Toya, played by Miki Odagiri, who's looking to escape the city council and find a more fulfilling job. Watanabe finds a newfound enjoyment for life with Toya. That happiness may be short-lived as he still feels there's untapped potential for him to do something important in the months he has left. Akira has often been hailed as perhaps Kurosawa's best work. The director himself apparently considered it to be so. I can certainly see why. If this film is to serve as evidence, Kurosawa, despite only being 42 or so, held the experienced view that life should be lived, not survived. I get the sense Kurosawa really understands that too. The message doesn't come off as shallow or pretentious. I'm sure this is helped by screenwriter Hideo Oguni, being in his late 40s, offering an even older, more lived point of view. Through flashbacks, the movie takes us through time as Watanabe relives the pain of losing the woman he loved. We also see the biggest regret of Watanabe's life, his failed relationship with his son. A relationship that started off loving, affectionate, and supportive, but slowly disintegrated. Disintegrated, perhaps, because of Watanabe's own actions. The actions of a man afraid to be too connected with his son for fear he'll lose him the same way he did his wife. That he'll be forced to go through the terrible cycle of loss all over again. So, Watanabe leaves himself in cold, distant isolation where he has nothing but monotonous, meaningless work to distract him until his time is up. His only significant relationship broken to the point where he doesn't even feel safe telling his son he's dying. His emotional pain, the sense of loss, and despair are all consuming. Watanabe is a man alone, desperate for connection. He practically reduced to a small child, scared and on his own, looking for a long since lost parent for comfort. That's why Watanabe turns to Toya. Watanabe has already found nothing satisfying during his time with well-meaning, but also weathered and cynical man who, knowing of Watanabe's cancer, takes Watanabe out for a shallow night filled with women, games, partying, and booze. Toya is different. She's full of life, laughter, fun, and optimism. He connects with her, one of the few people in his life who doesn't want to perform the same pointless tasks day after day. She wants to live, and Watanabe finds hope in her. But that connection is short-lived as it's his son that he wants to feel close to. He wants to feel vital and important to those he loves. 
But he doesn't think a reconnection will be possible. Another filmmaker might have tied up this part of the plot in a nice feel-good bow, but Kurosawa is wise to show the other possible results. Sometimes the barriers we throw up in life and the relationships we ruin aren't fixable before the end. Those who die and those who are left behind are left not with satisfactory closure, but unbearable what-ifs and could-have-beens. And the universe shows that despite some relationships being rough and disconnected, we can mean more to others than we might realize. We're a vital part of their lives, even if we feel unnoticed and disposable. What Nabi decides if he can't repair his relationship with his son, he wants to matter in the lives of others, of total strangers. If he's going to escape into his work, he wants that work to mean something. He wants to affect people's lives and leave something after he goes. He lands on what that could be, but constant roadblocks are thrown in his way by the whirlpool in action of City Hall. And it's here that I feel the movie loses its way a little. People will probably disagree with me on this, but the political bureaucratic commentary is a distraction. The last 40 to 50 minutes is mostly taken up by a seemingly endless discussion at Watanabe's wake about who in City Hall is more responsible for what Watanabe ultimately achieves. All the civil servants argue it was them, or the deputy mayor, all while knowing their job at this point is pretty much to intentionally sit around and let the red tape get in the way of them accomplishing anything for the public. The government's ability to throw up these obstructions and runarounds is shown really well, but why is it here? Why does so much of the last third of this movie have to be taken up by this when we could be spending that time exploring the relationship between Ratnabi and his son, the small beauties of life, and what makes life worth living? I know there's elements of those topics in this very long scene. Oh, But they're the small subtext when I feel they should be the dominating issues. I don't necessarily have a problem with throwing in these political themes, but it takes over to such a point I feel like I'm watching two different movies duke it out for control. I suppose the connecting tissue may be that we should strive to accomplish meaningful things in our lives. We shouldn't be content to simply float through it all while we're stumped down by the bad and apathetic and watch our hopes and dreams become nothing more than memories. Maybe that's why this stuff is here. If so, it's not integrated nearly as well as it should be. But while I felt Akuro could have developed his life ideas a little more, there's a tragic beauty to the film. It knows life is brief, connections are fragile, and the best way to live is to dream, try, and help others. That way, when we die, we'll feel fulfilled, happy, and alive. Hello everyone, hope you enjoyed day 6 of Solomon Grundy week. If you missed Friday's video, you can find it on the left, and Sunday's video will be available on the right if you're watching this video any other time besides its premiere day. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you later.